Hello everyone and welcome back to Five Acre Farm. This video is all about how I made sourdough bread, but it's actually starting from scratch. I didn't have a sourdough starter. I'll show how I made the starter and then also share with you some of the mistakes that I made, uh, things to try to remember. And yeah, you'll get to see the whole process. So if you've never done it before, it's gonna be a good one because you'll get to see the starting the sourdough all the way to making the bread and yeah I hope you enjoy. For the sourdough starter you want a clean glass jar and add in one cup of flour it's like a, a good quality flour and then one cup of water just with the water make sure it's not chlorinated because that will stop the activation process from happening then give it a really good mix you want to make sure that it's completely combined keep it somewhere warm sometimes that can be just on the bench if your house is quite warm if not I, what i did was ended up putting it on top of the coffee machine and just left the coffee machine on so it still had like that warmth the whole time and it's a consistent warmth as well every day you want to tip out half of the mixture in the jar and then add in another cup of flour and another cup of water and give it a really good mix again continue that process for around about five days then after five days you can start doing it twice you don't have to do it twice a day but it will sort of help to speed up the process of the activation happening and the bubbles forming this is what it looked like on day one then on day three it started getting a few more bubbles by day five it was getting even more bubbles and then the next shot is day 10 and you can really see those bubbles forming so it was well and truly activated so I thought I would give it a go making the bread I sort of felt like it wasn't quite ready but I just had the time and thought I would try so for all the measurements it was around about 500 grams of flour then the water that I added was 350 grams with the starter you can add around about 50 grams and that's what is what you normally add but I really like a, the, a really quite strong sourdough taste so I ended up doing 100 grams you can play around with this measurement give it a go um, try 50 grams if you like the taste of it stick with that if you if it's too strong for you just cut back on the amount of starter that you're using and if you want a more stronger flavor then add a bit more in just see how you go there's no sort of actual you know this is the exact amount of starter that you need to use so yeah just experiment and try it out and have a bit of fun with it give it a go try 100 grams you can even do 150 grams of starter Another ingredient that you're meant to add is around about four grams of salt. I actually ended up forgetting to add the salt. So yeah, it's, it, it didn't seem to end up mattering, but it probably doesn't have the same sort of taste that it, well, obviously it wouldn't have the same sort of taste that it would have if it had the salt in it. But yeah, so I'll just have to make sure that I actually add the salt in the next time I make sourdough bread. The bit that you do tip out from the sourdough starter, it's called the discard. We mixed our discard with water and any other veggies or scraps or anything that we were going to give to the chickens anyway. And then they seemed to really like it. They did end up, when they were eating it, they would flick their beaks and ended up looking like they had some really bad dandruff, but which of course I found very entertaining. There are some really good recipes out there that you can make using the discard but you want to make sure that it's when you're actually feeding your starter and once it's been properly activated so because ours hadn't activated properly yet we just mixed it in with the water and gave it to the chickens 
So add in the sourdough starter and the water and give that a really good mix before you add the flour. You sort of you want to make sure that the sourdough starter and the water has combined before you go adding the flour in. After I added the flour in, I just got in there with my hands and just combined everything that way. I always find that it's easier just to be using my hands instead of using some sort of kitchen utensil. It is a bit messier, you know, it's, you get stuff stuck all over your hands, but you get a better feel for what the dough should be feeling like as well. Also, remember to remove any rings before you start. You can see I'm taking off one of my rings here. You don't want to accidentally lose something in your sourdough bread. So just keep giving it a really good mix. It does sort of feel like it's a little bit too wet, but it ends up coming out fine at the end. Um, yeah, it's a bit messy, but get in there, have a go, have some fun. And yeah, the end result is absolutely worth the mess that it makes. So there you go, you can get a bit of an idea about what it looks like the first time you do the mix. Then after you've done that, you want to cover it and then keep it somewhere warm for an hour. I just put ours on top of the coffee machine again because it was, I know that's a consistent heat and it's really cold here at the moment. So it's not gonna actually activate properly if it's just sitting on the bench without any other kind of warmth. So now I'm going to start doing the stretch and fold. So I'll probably do it uh, maybe 20 or 30 times. It'll just depend on how it's looking and how it's feeling. But it looks good. It smells amazing. So after the lift and folds have been done, then cover it again and pop it back on somewhere warm just to sit. And this time it's only for half an hour. So now you repeat this process over the next few hours. I'm trying to think how many times I did it. I think maybe it was four times. So every half hour for two hours.
in another clean bowl I put a clean tea towel and put a fair bit of flour in there but one of the mistakes that I did do is I didn't add enough flour onto the tea towel so when I did end up taking the dough out it had actually stuck on some parts so it didn't matter a huge amount because I just picked off as much as I possibly could and chucked it into the wash straight away and it will be fine but a good way to do it that I didn't do it this way is to actually have the tea towel out flat make sure it's completely covered in flour before you put the dough in. So at this point I have finished doing the lift and folds for every half hour for the last two hours and now it's time to get it out onto the bench and try to sort of stretch it and shape it a bit more. This part would definitely be a lot easier with the right tools but I didn't have them and I will get them at some point but it's, it would make it easier but it doesn't also matter. If you don't have the right tools it's fine, it will work out anyway. So what you want to do is you just want to stretch it and pull it into the middle. So turning it each time that you do that and then that sort of creates that stretch on the outside of the dough. the sourdough starter. So it, I've been, I can't remember how when I actually started it. I think it was ten, maybe 10 days ago that I actually started the sourdough starter, but I don't think it is quite ready because it's been so cold here that I've had to put it on top of the um, coffee machine to actually just keep it warm. And that did seem to work and it's definitely getting a lot more bubbles. So it's a lot more active, but yeah, I think it might need another couple of days. Um, I do still, I added some, another cup of flour and another cup of water to the leftover sourdough starter. So it is, you know, I fed it again and it's still going. Um, and it's looking great. Yeah. Oh, and so because the sourdough starter wasn't quite ready, the actual um, dough hasn't been rising as much as what it should be. And, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference, but we'll wait and see. So yeah, it could be cut it open and it's not spongy on the inside. Um, could be a bit floury on the inside in the spots where I've folded it over and there was lots of flour on the folds, like on the inside of the folds. Um, yeah, maybe not super tasty without the salt, but but yeah, it's looking, it's looking really good. Oh, that's the other thing I did too. I forgot to add to, like more flour onto the tea towel. So 
there's some dough there that's stuck. I haven't taken it all off. It'll be fine, I'll be able to get that off. I just haven't done it just right now, but I'll do it later. Oven is ready, so I'll get the terracotta um, bread baker out. Okay, so this is preheated. It's gonna be absolutely boiling hot. Oh, it's smoking. <laughs> um, okay. So I definitely don't have all the right tools. I'm going to be using that one of our barbecue thingamajigs. Obviously you're not meant to be using a steak knife, but you are meant to be using a really, really sharp razor blade, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> getting a nice bit of color around there but there is also some bits that still just need a little bit more so I'm gonna leave the lid off now and pop it in for a bit longer but I leave the lid on oh my god it's beautiful All right, better get back in there. Oh, I like I'm Blown away. I, well, I, yeah, I was trying to get your reaction, but because your reaction was priceless. <laughs> priceless. You're priceless. Oh my god! Justin, it was beautiful! How good? How much longer is it going to be on for? Like, maybe 10 minutes. I'm so back, I'm so happy with that. It's yummy. Yeah, I forgot salt. Oh no, yeah. quite in the mix. Yeah. I know, but we can just add butter. Yeah. Ooh! Oh, that might be 
one day. <gasps> so sour dogs taste for lunch then. Yeah. And some frozen kimchi. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm still recording. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. How's it popping? Yeah. Lunch time. Cheers. Cheers. 